In this video lecture, we'll be looking at another example of polar area. Here we're interested in finding the area inside the larger loop and outside the smaller loop of the polar graph given by r equals 1 half plus cosine theta. So inside the larger loop and outside the smaller loop is the following area. So all of this part except for this inner loop piece. Okay, so we're going to need to figure out what kind of bounds we need here. And it looks like one of the bounds that we'll need will um, have to do with where this curve intersects the origin. So let's go ahead and find where 0 is equal to 1 half plus cosine theta. So we see that's where cosine theta equals negative a half. So we know cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. And so our theta value here will be at 2 pi thirds and 4 pi thirds. Okay, so we could add those angle lines to our graph to help us see what's going on. So 4 pi thirds would be along here. Looks like that's the angle in which we're going to go into the origin for one part of the loop. And 2 pi thirds would be for another part here. So we have theta equals 2 pi thirds and theta equals 4 pi thirds. Um, it can be also helpful to just plot a couple more points so you can see the direction in which the curve is being traced out. So let's just plot a couple of values the way we did for parametric curves. So for theta equals 0, we notice cosine of 0 will be 1, so r would be a half. So that's actually the point right here. So this is theta equals 0, and this is at 3 halves. Um, I could also plot the point, um, let's see what happens at pi thirds. So we know cosine of pi thirds is a half, so r would be 1. And this angle right here is pi thirds, so that distance right there um, going out from the origin is 1. So this is, this is 1 comma pi thirds. Um, I could plot a couple more values here at pi over 2. Well, pi over 2 is the y-axis here. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this distance would be 1 half. Okay, so this is theta equals pi over 2, but that's a distance of 1 half. Let's just plot a few more here for um, completeness. So we've already seen at 2 pi thirds, we're going to be hitting 0. Okay, so it looks like we started right here at theta equals 0, and then our curve went into the origin. All right, so what happens next here? Well, I can pick some next easier um, angle to evaluate, something like 5 pi 6. So at 5 pi 6, um, I know that cosine of 5 pi 6 is going to be something negative. It'll be like negative root 3 over 2, so this would be 1 half minus root 3 over 2. So we notice in this case, this radius is actually going to be less than 0 since um, our root 3 here is bigger than 1. Okay, so let's just plot one more value here. Um, at pi, we know that cosine of pi is negative 1. So r, again, something negative, we have negative a half. So let's plot pi first, then we'll come back and plot the 5 pi 6. So at pi, we know that would put us over here, put the negative x-axis, but this is saying to go back, um, backwards. Um, since I have r equals negative a half. So that puts us at the point right here on, on that inner loop. And notice that 5 pi 6, which is going to be some angle out around here, okay, with that negative r value is going to put us on this point on the lower part of the loop. So we're coming into the origin, we're getting that bottom part of the loop, and then with some symmetry here, this loop would come back up after pi, go back into the origin at 4 pi thirds, and then we'd go around all the way back to um, theta equals 2 pi or theta equals 0 right back at the beginning. Okay, so let's try to use this to figure out how we're going to set up the area for that shaded region that we're interested in. Notice that our curve from 0 to 2 pi thirds looks like the following. So we started at 0, and then we went into the origin. That's 2 pi thirds. So the area from 0 to 2 pi thirds would include all of this region. Okay. So the integral from 0 to 2 pi thirds of 1 half r squared d theta would be that area. But we actually don't want all of this area. 
right? Even if we're using symmetry, we wanted this top part here, but not including that loop. So we're going to need to subtract something out from that amount. So what would be the area of our loop piece? So we said we wanted the area um, inside the curve, but outside of that loop. So what about this little loop part here? What's that area? Okay. Well, based on how we were tracing out the curve, it looks like I would get to that top part of the loop here at pi, and then I'd go back to the center there at 4 pi thirds. So the area of that top part of the loop would be an integral from pi to 4 pi thirds of 1 half r squared d theta. Okay. And there are multiple other ways that we could look at setting up that area, but this is um, one nice way to use some symmetry um, and use what we had just done with tracing out the curve to find what those key values are where we're starting and ending some of the different loop pieces. So we can set up our area as an integral of twice the integral from 0 to 2 pi thirds of 1 half our r, which is 1 half plus cosine theta, squared d theta, minus the integral from pi to 4 pi thirds of 1 half, 1 half plus cosine theta squared d theta. Okay, since this is going to capture this um, the area inside the whole outer loop, times 2, but then minus this area uh, inside the half loop times 2, so that we'll get that area between the two things. Okay. So we see that what we were doing here in, in pictures is we took this area minus this area here, which is going to equal the area that we wanted which is the area between, and then we're multiplying it times 2. Um, we're able to do that because of the symmetry that we have in our curve. So we know that to evaluate this um, integral, we would expand this out. We'd end up with some cosine squared terms that we would then use the um, trig identity on. So I'm not going to go through that evaluation because it's really the setup that takes the most work. But I do want to observe a couple other ways that we could set this up. So notice that what we found in, in this setup was the area of this top part of the loop, which we realized went from pi, where we had that negative 1 half um, r value, back to 4 pi thirds. But I could have also found the area of this bottom part of the loop. Notice that that part would be an integral from 2 pi thirds the first time that we hit the center up to pi, or first time we hit the origin, of 1 half, 1 half plus cosine theta squared d theta. So I could have used this version instead of the pi to 4 pi thirds version to subtract out the loop part. Now I'm going to mention uh, two additional ways we could have looked at finding the area. So one other way we could have looked at breaking up our area is looked at finding the area inside this whole thing and then subtracting the loop from that part. So the area inside the whole um, outer loop here, remember we said that we were going to get this top half here from 0 to 2 pi thirds. Well, if we go from negative 2 pi thirds to 2 pi thirds, okay, that'll sweep out that area from here up to here. So this is at theta is 2 pi thirds. This is theta equals negative 2 pi thirds, okay, of our 1 half r squared d theta. And then I could subtract from that the area of this whole loop, which we saw was from 2 pi thirds to 4 pi thirds of 1 half r squared d theta. So that's another variation um, that'll come out to the same area that we're interested in. Let me just mention one final one. So if you thought to look at the integral from 0 to 2 pi, um, what 0 to 2 pi is going to do is count the inside part and also the loop part together. So it would, end, it would end up counting it twice. So if we look at um, the integral from 0 to 2 pi 
of 1 half r squared d theta. And in all these cases, r is the r that we're given in the problem, the 1 half plus cosine theta. So if I started looking at this, this integral would compute the area inside here. Okay. But let me break this up into pieces. So for that 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to 2 pi thirds, we'd be capturing this region. So that's already including that loop a second time. Then from 2 pi thirds to pi, we'd be capturing the bottom half of the loop. Then for pi to 4 pi thirds, we'd be capturing the top part of the loop. And then for 4 pi thirds up to 2 pi, we'd be getting the bottom part here. Okay, so if I wanted the area not including the loop, well, this version and this version are counting the loop, and then I'm counting the loop again, so I'd have to subtract twice the integral from 2 pi thirds to 4 pi thirds of 1 half r squared d theta. Okay, so I hope these additional formulations give you a little bit more of an idea of, of how we're going about um, finding these areas and why it's important to figure out where we are at these different locations. Um, in all of these formulations of the area, you should find, once you do the calculation, that the area is pi force plus 3 root 3 over 4. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions on this example.